Amos was a big red mammoth mule. He and the dark little Jenny Ruby were the only two left over from the grand time of mules pulling the plow. The machines came and retired them to a life of hanging out around a mule lot, an arrangement which they seemed to be entirely satisfied with. I don't know what it was about the mules, but I was fascinated by them. I loved them. Even though I was a boy, I knew that their days as heavy lifters on my daddy's farm were passing. Two A model John Deere's appeared and took the mule's place in front of the plow. Every spring and fall, Jesse Lee or Tut would take Ruby out and plow the garden. On summertime weekends, they'd hook them both up to the old wagon, and we'd load up and go fishing at the gar hole. Most of the time, though, the mules in the wagon were used to take the hands to the field. As a boy, I helped carry water up from Rattlesnake Branch to the workers in the red field. Every morning, I could hear them taking the mules out of the barn as I guzzled milk and stuffed syrup, buttered biscuits, and smoked sausage in my mouth. Mama must have understood, because that was about the only time she'd allow me to bolt from the table without helping with the dishes. I loved the way the mules smelled. I just knew that was the way it smelled on Tex Ritter's ranch. I loved all the gear, the collars, the hams, the trace chains, the way it all hooked together. I loved the grinding sound the mules made when gnawing the bit. I just plain out loved the mules. They were my pals. Most of the time, Amos and Ruby just stood around, swishing their tails and shimmying their muscles when the flies lit on them. They fell right into the life of hanging out in the shade, watching everybody else work, especially Amos. I think at one time, he was my grandfather's old saddle mule, cause sometimes he would break into a single foot when I was riding him back to the barn. My grandfather rode a mule everywhere until he got a motorcycle and finally a car. Kit Thompson, who lived on Uncle Joe's place, told me one day that Big Daddy put Amos to the plow because he got to where he'd stop and wouldn't start. He laughed and said, when old Amos got to where he thought was far enough away from the barn, he just quit, done for the day. He balked that way behind Miss Nellie Grantham's house one day and forced Big Daddy to stay at her house much longer than he wanted to. Big Daddy had to build a fire under that old mule to get him to move. Old Amos was pulling a middle buster the next day. The mules were not troublemakers like that old gobbler and that hateful Muscovy duck. That old drake tried to bite me. They'd run at me all swelled up and thumping and hissing. One day my daddy took his hickory walking stick and hit that turkey on the side of his head so hard that he could never again open but one eye at a time. Broke him up from chasing me. Broke him up from chasing anything. But the mules? The mules were so cool. They were happy to just stand around grazing and looking sublime. Ruby was a little black beauty and a good plow mule. She was strong, quick, could gee haul with the best of them, and she wasn't fractious. When Jesse Lee finally started working in the garden with the tractor, Daddy sold Ruby to the old man down the road. Amos then became a perfect example of the Zen parable on the value of being worthless and spent much of his time being unconcerned about anything. He had made it to mule nirvana, and for his remaining years, he had a private suite with the yard, plenty of fresh water, and me. I kept the door to the corn crib open so he could nab an ear when he wanted. When he got it all eaten back to where he couldn't reach one, I'd get up and kick some down for him. Every Saturday, I'd talk to him while I was shelling corn to take to Mr. Braxton's grist mill. I don't know how many times I'd come to see him and find him standing there looking off in the distance as though he could see a group of jennies standing in a field of crimson clover. Old Amos was a cool old mule. One afternoon, I got off the school bus to find a truck from the rendering plant down at Goshen back to, to the lot. They were dragging Amos out with a chain. It didn't seem right. They showed no reverence, no remorse, and that made me angry. It broke my heart to see old Amos manhandled that way. Mama was waiting, afraid for my reaction. She knew I'd be mad. But down inside, I knew that to those men, 
They were simply dragging old dead mule out of his stall. They didn't know it, but they were dragging a lot more than that out of me. With Amos gone, the time of the mule on my daddy's place was over. A whole way of life on the farm slipped into the pages of soon-to-be-forgotten history. Maybe so. However, I shall not forget. I was born into the tail end of that era, and what little I saw made an indelible imprint upon me. To this day, I still love the old ways, and I still love mules. <laughs>